Good morning, afternoon. What time is it? Uh, 11.22, so still morning, technically. I usually don't get out of the house much until after 11, and that's pushing it. Um, mother had her doctor's appointment this morning to go get the shots in her eyes, and my sweet brother Dana took her. I was supposed to have had rigs, but his other grandparents came and got him, but they're bringing him back at three, so... But I'm so glad that Dana took her for me. That really helps me so much. We went and bought a huge grocery bill Saturday. And my great nephew, uh, Carter, and my nephew, Matthew, spent all day Saturday cleaning my mother's yard. Oh, my gosh. She has all those huge pine trees. And um, it just, she used to rake that pine all the time and actually loved doing it. Loved getting out there working, but obviously cannot anymore. But Matthew gets one day off a week. He works two jobs. So Saturday is his only day off. And that little fella worked all day long till, till almost 6.30 Saturday night in my mother's yard and refused to take any money from her. Would not let her pay them. Would not. Would not. Now I'm going to tell you something. And I mean, because we went and got cash to pay them. And because I feel like if they get out there and work like hired laborers on his only day off, that he deserves some money. But she, he would not accept any money. And that's love, guys. He told her, me and her right there, we went and bought a huge grocery bill. And he, when we came back up, um, him and his son, uh, Carter's 14, 15. He'll be 16 in October. He's as tall as he is. But, um... I said, now, Matthew, mother really wants to give you some money. And he said, nope. He looked at her and he said, your company alone is worth all this hard work. Oh, she loved that. She loved that. She's like, well, yeah, she's done a lot for them in the past when they needed it. And he knows it. And, but I thought that was so awesome of him to come and spend his only day off. And I mean... When I say he he works two jobs, he does. Uh, I think it's three or four nights a week he works a second job. And his first job is installing gates at huge companies, huge elaborate homes. So he works out in the Alabama heat every day. I don't see how they do it. I do not know how they do it with the kind of heat and humidity that we have nowadays, but he does. So, shout out to my precious nephew, Matthew, and my great nephew, Carter, for your love for my sweet mama. That's what it's all about, guys. It takes a team to take care of an elderly parent. And just like Dana teamed up with me today and took her to the doctor. So, when I come in, I open the back of my um, the hatch on my car and my car because we had to buy everything and then I bought a few things too but we, she needed like clothes detergent she needed dog food she needed water all of it and so, and so much of it's heavy and so when I opened it up they both quit working and came down there to help me another huge plus and uh, Carter my great nephew said my goodness Aunt Suzanne he said who normally does this who normally gets all this groceries and takes them in the house and I said wah <laughs> you're looking at her it ain't easy on this old fibromyalgia body but it's got to be done she's got to eat she's got to have everything so he was like who normally does all this <laughs> I thought that was hilarious because that was such an honest question I mean, we really thought we had somebody doing that but anyway just chit chat for today but I wanted to touch base I'm on my way to get many glasses and I'll come back on after I get them and I'm expecting a phone call also so I may have to get off here shortly but uh, I wanted to come on here and let's talk about today what do you do when you receive bad news I had put the video out yesterday about my sweet mother-in-law and that we didn't get the report that we wanted. What do you do in this world 
when you receive bad news. Now, I've been, <laughs> unfortunately, I've been there too many times. Um, until, if you've never really been sick before, to where you really didn't know what was going on, you don't know what it's like to for your health to be threatened. To me, that's one of the greatest fears that can happen to us is for our health to be jeopardized. And you don't realize how precious good health is until it's jeopardized. Um, when I had the brain bleed last summer, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I was scared because small brain bleeds sometimes lead to large brain bleeds and I laid in that hospital and I'm, I'm not sure that I have ever felt that much anxiety before I I don't struggle with anxiety like a lot of people do I have it off and on of course I do we all have some but I know some of you are crippled by it sometimes and so I can now not just sympathize with you, but I can empathize with you because that week that I was in the hospital, that anxiety gripped my heart. It it gripped me. And I felt like, and I, and I have felt some anxiety this past week with my mother-in-law. So, you know, I can empathize with those of y'all who suffer that. I so see now where it can be crippling, where before I can't really say I mean, I've been through really, really bad times, but it seems like that was the worst anxiety that I had experienced like several days in a row. And I know some of you deal with it all the time. And I just say, pray, pray, pray when it comes on you because it is a very bad feeling. But what do we do in this world when your husband or wife comes in and says, I don't love you anymore and I want a divorce? What do we do in this world when you get a phone call or you pick up your, I'll just say you pick up your husband's phone and you find text messages and or pictures of their knowing that he's in a relationship with another person. What do you do when you go and you find a knot in your breast and then the doctor says it's cancer? What? do we do? Well, in this world, <laughs> pastor's been preaching on things not to be held hostage by. And yesterday, the Spirit of God just flowed through the service and he really didn't get to preach that much because there were so many people on the altar praying. It was just a fantastic service. But at the end, he talked about struggling with addictions. And and how that this world, this world, this world that we're living in, we automatically think of a way of escape as a glass of wine, a bottle of beer, a Xanax, a joint, harder drugs, and sometimes even as a way of escape, we use extramarital affairs to get away from the reality that we're in. Overeating, turning to food for your comfort. That's what this world has to offer you when those kind of reports or those kind of th news comes to you. But as a child of God, and I've, se and I've seen both sides, as a child of God, we have the knowledge, the hope, the faith, and I mean blindly stumbling through the dark, but knowing that there's a light at the end of the darkness. Now, I'm going to tell you. I've been in some situations that I felt my stomach come up into my throat like I was gonna just pass out when I when 
things happened. I've had very hard times. I speak a lot of faith. I speak encouragement. And I don't speak that just out of book knowledge. I speak that because I've been through the murder of my father. I've been the one on the other side of the extramarital affair. I've been through suicide with my sister. So, as the old saying goes, I've got t-shirts to back up what I'm telling y'all today, okay? I'm not just saying this, oh, well, you've never had any trouble. You, it's easy for you to say that. No, it's not easy for me to say this. I've been so low before when going through things that I didn't think I was ever going to come back. But I never lost complete hope, okay? I can see in this world, if you have nothing but this world to minister to you during times of need where you lose your hope, this world offers no hope. You know, I've even seen people say, I've got to drink because you just don't know why I'm going through No, you don't. You've got God to turn to. I've got to do these pills. All of this that the world wants you to turn to is addictive behavior, okay? We know drinking leads to more drinking. We know pills lead to more pills. Now look, and I'm not talking about pills for medicine. I take medicine, okay? I'm not talking about that. I'm not even talking about a narcotic because if your body, if you're you're in something, I'm, I'm not judging. I'm talking about trying to fix your problems with those things, okay? See, the situation we're in right now with my mother-in-law <clears throat> is about as heartbreaking as you can get to watch her children watch her. Now, I love her with all my heart, but I'm her daughter-in-law. There is a difference. And my love is real. My love is huge. I've been in this family 22 years, and I love her. I adore her. But I stand back and I watch her children, and I know. But when you know the Lord, you know that this world is but a vapor. And this world is not the end. I went through a very... Now, when I say ugly divorce, it was not fighting. It was not public displays. Probably... Oh, I forgot my wedding ring at home. <laughs> Just felt it. Probably... Mine was a very low-key compared because I prayed a lot and <clears throat> tried to do the right things in front of my daughter. But mine went on in my church. So much humiliation. I've never talked a lot about this, but I just feel like I'm supposed to share this right now. A lot of humiliation. A lot of embarrassment. And I could have quit, and I really had grounds for quitting that church and just walking off and saying, forget it. But I had a 13-year-old daughter that loved that church with all her heart. She had waited her whole little life to get in the youth choir, which at that time was the biggest thing going. And it happened right as she went into the youth choir. So am I going to throw her little life away to make me happy? No. Not going to do it. Did I want to walk away and never look back? I absolutely did. But I had to get on my knees and say, God, order my steps. Tell me what to do. Now, we stayed together for two more years. And things never did work out. Things never did improve. Things never did stop. And there came a time because of that two years that I gave, and I'm not saying I'm Miss Role Model, look at me, hey everybody, I'm the perfect divorcee, I'm not saying that. My journey, my journey, was that I spent that time with God. Was I perfect all during that time? No. 
Did I have feelings of anger and probably hatred during that time? Yes. Did I constantly seek to suppress that and to try to do God's will? Yes. But I just know that God had his hand upon me the whole way through, guys. Now, I'm going to tell you something. If you go back and look at yesterday's video, right when they're putting Peggy down into the water to be baptized, at one point, John is so tenderly holding his mother in his arms, his brother Philip, and we call him Bam, 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 we call him Bam. Bam was just as tenderly holding her on the other side, and then Pastor was standing in front of her, just gently letting her down. And that there's one picture that captured. Well, there were several pictures, but just one picture that stuck out in my mind as they captured that of gently letting her into the water. There was something about the way that John was holding his body in his arms and the intent look upon his face and the same for his brother, Bam, that spoke to my heart in volumes I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit came all over me, and God spoke to my spirit and said, this is exactly how I hold you every day of your life. This is how me as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit have you every day in the palms of our hands. You may go through trials and tribulations. You will. He tells us in the Bible, you will go through these. But don't be afraid, for I have already overcome. I'm telling y'all. just got parts here before I go in. I'm telling y'all, when the Lord gave me that message I'm right here in front of you Suzanne my son Jesus is over here the Holy Spirit is right here we've got you no matter what you go through we've got you that's what you do when trouble comes your way you go to the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit and you say, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to turn. All I know is that I need you holding me right now. And they're gonna say, I am, I will. I will be there for you every step of the way. Was my divorce easy? No. I did it the best way I knew how. I did it as fair as I could. People said I was too good. My lawyer told me I was too good. But I did what God placed in my heart. It's, it was rough going through it. It was rough afterwards because I was the girl that never was gonna go through a divorce because both of our parents had fought and had affairs or one side had, and I wasn't going to go through that, but I did. But the thing is, even when I'm caught off guard, God is not. Remember that. Even when you're caught off guard by something, He's not. He's waiting there with open arms. If you don't know this God, if you don't know Jesus is your Savior, you don't have a lot of hope. You don't have a lot of hope. See, I know that when God takes Peggy, whatever his timing is, that I'm going to see her again because she's in Christ, I'm in Christ. But if a person is not in Christ, they don't have that promise. So, yeah, you're hopeless. But everybody can come to Christ and have that assurance that this life is just a vapor. You know, the older we get, the quicker the weeks go, right? 
It is. You realize as you get older how much life is a vapor. But there is something on the other side waiting for us. And I'm going to see my daddy. I'm going to see my grandparents. I'm going to see my sister. I have hope. This world will bring you very hard times. But he brings you an answer. You're not going to understand everything that goes on this earth while we live here. I don't understand my sister's suicide. I do not. But I know where she was with Christ. I know that he took care of her. And I know I'm going to hold her again. What do you do when you get bad news? You get on your knees. You cry out before him and you say, Father, I'm in a desperate situation and I desperately need you to guide me through this. Is it going to be easy? No. Is he going to do it? Yes, he is. I love you guys. I just wanted to bring you that hope today. There is always, always hope in Jesus Christ. Love you guys so much. Bye-bye.